So let's have a look at the new things Angular 9 brought to us. And there is one big, the main new feature in Angular 9, and that is Ivy. Now, in case you don't know what Ivy is, it's their new internal view rendering engine, which means it's the logic that brings your Angular app to life, you could almost say. It's the thing which uses your components, your templates, and which in the end turns all of that, all of the component and template logic you write into instructions that run in the browser when you ship your finished Angular application. These are the instructions that really change the DOM thereafter, update the DOM, render stuff to the page, and so on. And therefore, the fact that we have a new rendering engine means that it's an under the hood change. The API, the syntax you work with, the way you create Angular applications, components, modules, and so on, that has all not changed. It's still the same as before. So everything you learned about Angular still is valid and relevant because that is an under the hood change. Still, it is an important under the hood change. Now, what's the cool thing about this new rendering engine? It already offers smaller bundles for most Angular apps, not necessarily for all, but the team is working on making every Angular app smaller. And especially for very large apps, the size improvements can be very significant. And over the next months and years, of course, the Angular team continues their work on Ivy and ensure that we get smaller and smaller bundles and therefore less code our users have to download. So since the code we write hasn't changed, it's basically a free win we get here where we magically now get smaller bundles thanks to this new rendering engine. Smaller bundles, of course, are always great because it means our users have to download less code until our app starts up. And in addition, Ivy also is written in a way that offers an amazing runtime performance. So the idea basically is that with this new engine, our apps start up faster, and once they did start up, they also are extremely fast, all thanks to Ivy. Another thing that changed with Angular 9 is that when you build your app for development, so when you run ng-surf in your application, it will by default use a head of time compilation. And in the past, in older Angular versions, it used just-in-time compilation there. Now, of course, technically that should give you the same app, but because of the way it does compile your code, there actually can be some differences or bugs in the content it spits out. Now, this already could lead to some errors being thrown during a head of time compilation, which you wouldn't get during just in time compilation. But one important new feature that was also added with Angular 9 is that you can configure how your templates should be checked. So, how the types you're using in your templates should be checked. Some basic support was available in the past too. Now it's a bit more detailed. You can switch between three different modes, the basic mode, the full mode, and the strict mode. This uh, simply determines how Angular will parse your component templates and which things it will check and for which things it will throw errors. And this page on the official docs indeed is the best way to learn all about the differences. Generally, and probably as no surprise, the strict mode is, well, the strictest mode of all of them, which does the most checks. And I wanna show you where the strict mode differs from the full mode, which already existed in the past. Now, first of all, let's check that it's not turned on right now. In tsconfig.json or in the tsconfigapp.json, which in the end inherits from that master JSON file here, you can turn on the template type checks with full template type check set to true inside of the Angular compiler options. And this is an option you already could use in the past. This will check your templates for a lot of different things and catch a lot of errors. For example, with this mode already, if I go to my app component template where I have my user property here in the app component, if I try to use user hobbies here, a key which does not exist in my user object there, I already get an error. If I try to save this, it does compile, but it also shows me this error in the end. So that's some check I already have in place. I can, for example, access user.h though, because we have a h property in that user object. Now, nonetheless, this actually should also yield an error. 
Why? Because if we have a look at the user component, which I'm using here, we see that the name property to which I'm binding actually is of type string. And if we take a closer look at the user object, we see that the age property there is a number. So I'm actually passing a number into this name property. It's not a string. Now with Angular 9, we can go back to that tsconfig.json file and add a new option here, strict templates, and set this to true. And if we do this, it will take this into account. Let's restart ng-surf to make sure it picks up the new configuration. And let's see what this gives us now. This will now compile the application and it now gives us an error. It gives us an error that type number is not assignable to type string. You see, at the least of point of time I'm recording this, I'm not getting an error in my IDE here because Visual Studio Code and the Angular language service, which gets used by Visual Studio Code, does not know about this new setting yet, but I get an error here in the compiler and it catches this unnecessary error where I'm passing the wrong type of data into this component. Once I switch this to dot name, which refers to this name, which is a string, which therefore has the data type I expect here, this of course goes away. So after making this change here, you see if I restart this to show you that it recompiles without errors, it will do so without any errors. Here it is running the way it should. So that's another extra addition added by Angular 9, this extra checking mode. And if you turn it on, you can avoid unnecessary mistakes, which might not have necessarily crashed your application in the past, but which still might be something you want to look into and you want to fix. Angular 9 also brought some minor breaking changes and deprecations. And for that, to learn more, the best way really is to go to the official Angular 9 update guide, which you find on angular.io. And there you can learn more about the deprecations and changes. And I can already tell there is nothing major in there. Of course, we have Ivy, which is not a change where we have to change anything. It's just under the hood change. Change TypeScript version, yeah, that is not too hard. And then some deprecations of features which you most likely didn't use anyway. So you can safely ignore that. No application should be broken because of updating to Angular 9. Speaking of that, if you have an application you want to update, you can simply run ng-update at Angular CLI at Angular Core. And by the point of time you are watching this video, dash dash next is not required anymore because then the next version will already be the current version, Angular 9. So this is a simple command you can run in your Angular project and it will automatically perform all the package updates and so on that are required to update your application. Now, one of the bigger changes we also have with Angular 9 and which we actually already had with Angular 8 is that when you're using at view child in your components to select some element from your template and work with it in your component, you have to add this extra static option. I got an example project here, very simple one. And there in my new product component, I use at view child to get access to one of my inputs, simply just to show this change, not because there wouldn't be another way, there would be with ng-model. But here I am using at view child, and in Angular 8, you already had to add this second argument to at view child and set static to false in most scenarios. Now in Angular 9, whenever static was set to false, you can just get rid of this argument. You're back to the mode we had before in Angular 7 and older. So we can just use at view child like this. There is just one exception. If you want to use this element before change detection ran, which is typically the case in ng on init, for example, you have to add static true. So static false basically never needs to be added, it's the default, but static true needs to be added if you access the element you're getting access to inside of ng on init. So before change detection ran, then you need to add this. You already needed to do this in Angular 8, you still need to do it in Angular 9. The difference to Angular 8 just is that in Angular 8, you also needed to add this for static false. In Angular 9, if it's false, you can omit it. So true, always required, false can be omitted. And this is already it. So it doesn't really sound like a lot changed, does it? 
Well, Ivy is a big change, even though it's just under the hood and therefore we don't see it. But getting smaller bundles in our applications is a huge win, since we don't need to change our code to benefit from that. And in addition, when we think about Angular 10 and the future of Angular in general, Ivy will most likely play a major role. Of course, the Angular team continues to work on Ivy and therefore we'll see more and more size improvements and all the runtime performance improvements over time, which we all get for free because it's the underlying rendering engine. So this is a huge change. And in addition, besides bug fixes and other improvements, we might also see new APIs or new syntax we can use in Angular apps to build our apps that is possible because of Ivy, which does not mean that you have to relearn everything and you will write your Angular apps in a totally different way. But if some things will get easier over time, for example, if you at some point don't need ng modules anymore or something like that, then certainly no one would complain. So we'll see improvements there, we'll obviously get the size improvements, and we might see exciting new features based on Ivy in Angular 10 and beyond. So a huge release, even though you don't directly see it, but Ivy is a huge change, really helping us with our applications, and we get it for free, you don't need to adjust anything.